you come here in the 1740s, this would have been the place to be seen in Gloucestershire. So this was designed as a party garden. Essentially, what you see now is an English country gentleman's take on what was fashionable in Europe at the time. So we think that perhaps the Hyatts went around Europe and did the grand tour, came back with art and architecture and cultural influences and said to whoever it was that designed the garden here, why don't you make this happen for me? So there may be colours from France and arches from Italy, all incorporated here in the various features dotted around the garden. Pan was the god of general decadence, and that was certainly the evidence uh, contemporary writing suggests that that's what went on here. So it was a place for having a wild time. And Pan, with his music, would have been the man that oversaw it all. And the statue of Pan that used to live in the garden lives just next door now, so every visitor that comes sees him. By the 1950s, the garden was essentially left to nature, um, but has been restored then since the 1980s onwards. The Thomas Robbins painting uh, is probably our principal source for the restoration of the garden. It was, we think, painted in 1748 uh, for the owners, for the Hyatt family, and is a depiction of what the garden looked like at the time. And essentially this garden is a restoration of the space according to the Thomas Robbins painting as best we can. We'd like to think that if the Hyatts came back and stood in the spot here and looked around, they'd recognise much of what we've reinstated. Our current sculpture exhibition, Art Unbound, we've spent a couple of years putting together um, and now features 119 sculptures which are in the garden for the whole of the summer of this year. And we've used what we think are the key characteristics of the garden in terms of curating it. So fun, beauty, natural materials to create an exhibition which catches the eye and enhances what we think is the setting of the garden. So the aim is they don't distract from, but they complement what is here already. And it's been a great interest both for visitors but also for us to be able to put on workshops inspired by the sculpture installation over the summer. The two sets of workshops that we've been hosting over this summer, uh, we have a sculpture based one which takes particularly the theme of shells or rock eye uh, from which we think the word rococo is probably derived and children come and essentially learn some of the basic principles of sculpture and particularly using shells in that. And then the other half of the workshop focuses much more on creating a rococo garden, so what are the key elements of a rococo garden and then being able to put that in some kind of design. I then set about collecting a lot of shells myself so that the children uh, could work with these. Again, also a found object, but then linking into the Rococo period and using that as a basis uh, to make artworks of their own. And then hopefully they'll visit the gardens afterwards in conjunction with the sculpture trail that's going on at the moment as well. Watching them be creative, and knowing what Rococo Garden means and putting that onto the paper, seeing what's come out, it's been amazing. And bringing creativity back into their lives, really. These are our Rococo drawings. I believe that will bring another generation to the garden. It's opening it up to us a new generation of people who will hopefully stay with the garden and grow with the garden. Rococo Garden is very old. Rococo Garden was built in 1748. Rococo is a style of art and was very popular in Italy and France in the 1700s. Rococo Garden has lots of follies. Rococo used loads of essays. It didn't have a line of symmetry anywhere, it just wasn't symmetrical and it just went crazy. It was crazy and just very playful. I enjoyed my workshop. I guess part of my mission is to help people understand why these buildings are here and what, what it all looks like so it makes sense. So I think for me these workshops really help 
to start to answer those questions. They've really helped to raise the profile of the garden because we've been able to involve families and children in particular who perhaps wouldn't have thought of coming to the garden and they've had a chance to get a little bit deeper so to get under the skin of the garden uh, and to understand what it means to have a Rococo garden here. So I think being able to understand what Rococo is and what that means has been really helpful for us and for us to be able to communicate that on. Benefits of this project have been substantial and we're really grateful to the Heritage Lottery Fund for their support of what we've put together. We've been able to deepen our knowledge of what we know about the garden. Um, we've been able to train some of our volunteers so that they can communicate on to people that visit the garden, but also we've been able to impact directly on the lives of another generation, both of parents and also of children. <laughs>